Those of you taking in the fall, I guess the biggest thing you need to know is the coming of the digital LSAT. So the LSAT is going digital this summer, starting in July. Half of test takers will receive the digital format. Half will receive the paper and pencil format. LSAC chooses for you and you don't get any advance notice. And so for that reason, I don't love the idea of taking it in July. One thing you could do is take it in June. And that way, if you were to take it in July, you'd only have another five to six weeks to stay fresh on the LSAT. And so for that reason, I think that July is good only if you've also been going for June. But if that's not the case for you, and you're going for September, October, November, and so on, in that case, what I'd suggest is just prep as if you're going for digital, because that's what it's going to be. Starting in September, the LSAT will be 100% digital. It'll be on a tablet. Specifically, the Microsoft Go tablet is what they'll be using. Now, if you want to prep accordingly, I'd say get a tablet. It doesn't have to be that one, though. If you already have an iPad, that's fine. I recommend also potentially getting a Samsung Galaxy tablet. If you don't have one, that's pretty affordable. It's around $250 or $300. And that tablet is a good one. I'd say it's probably good enough, and it'll certainly run LSAC's digital LSAT format. So LSAC on their site, they have this familiarization tool. It's at familiar.lsac.org. And so if you go on there, you can play around with it. You can use it, of course, on your computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, but you can also do it on the tablet and then it'll more closely replicate the actual test date experience, of course. And then if you don't have that, you have a smartphone, it'll work on that too. So go to familiar.lsac.org and you can try out what the digital LSAT looks like and see the interactive features. It's kind of cool actually. You can highlight with this tool they have, you can underline with that tool, you can enlarge the text, there's a countdown timer, and you can also flag questions. And of course, you're also not, sa you're not losing any time to bubbling. So I think it could help you save a little bit of time. But there are some downsides though. One big downside is that you can't draw freehand on the tablet. So for that reason, you kind of have to do it separately on your own on scrap paper and then kind of go back and forth between the two. So I'd say get a tablet if you can. If not, use a smartphone. That'll be the best way to replicate what it looks like. If you can't do that, though, I'd say get your hands on the PDFs if you can, and then use the PDFs. If you can study with the PDFs, then that'll be a great thing because you can go between the PDFs and the scrap paper. So that's something to consider, too. And then you have pretty much as much scrap paper as you need. I wouldn't really be concerned about a limit on that. What I think you do have to get used to is going back and forth between the screen and the paper and the screen and your notebook. So if you've been using the actual books of 10 exams on, on Amazon, getting those, the actual official LSAT prep tests, that's great, but it's not really enough. So I'd say if you're doing digital, again, get the PDFs if you can, have them up on your screen and go back and forth between them since that's what you'll be facing. One feature of the digital LSAT you should be aware of is that there's a countdown timer going down from 35 minutes at the five minute warning you can't remove it. And so to me, that'd be a little bit nerve inducing because you kind of see it constantly moving. So again, you want to practice for the digital format with that in particular.